Stan Gibalisco here. Uh, I'd like to talk just a little bit about an old radio that I built back in the early 1960s. Actually, I didn't build it entirely myself. It was a kit that I, I don't even remember the name of the manufacturer of that kit. But I remember that it had a receiver called a regenerative grid leak detector with pentode amplifier. Kind of a fancy name for a radio that would receive shortwave broadcasts quite effectively. Uh, it was built on a little circuit board and it had little clip lead wires and back in that day uh, transistors were just starting to become commonplace. Uh, the radio that I had, the kit that I had used a 1T4 vacuum tube. I actually remember the model number of that tube. One meaning it required only about one volt for its filament. I don't know what the T4 stood for, but anyhow it used a one and a half volt flashlight cell to heat up this filament of this vacuum tube and it had the capability to operate as a pentode. That means it has three grids. Control grid, screen grid, suppressor grid. The thing also had a 45 volt battery. You had to actually buy this battery. It was I don't know exactly what the size of it is. Um, maybe it was about the size of a typical external hard drive that you might find these days or a remote control a box for your garage door opener or television set or something like that. Anyway it supplied 45 volts which was enough to run this vacuum tube. Now I don't recall the exact schematic diagram of the circuit because I don't believe that that kit even had schematic diagrams. It had pictorial diagrams. So I scrounged around and looked for circuits of a so-called regenerative grid leak detector radio. Well, what does all that mean anyway? Regenerative, first of all, means that it employs some positive feedback here from the output coming from the plate of this tube to the input going to the grid with a little coil that they call a feedback coil. Sometimes they called it a tickler coil. It was a little coil that you inserted into the secondary winding of the uh, main tuning coil which in conjunction with this variable capacitor, this circuit right here, would determine the frequency based on the inductance of this secondary winding and the capacitance of this capacitor. It was a variable capacitor, a 365 picofarad most likely, variable capacitor about the size of a ping pong ball. You can still get those. I actually got one from a parts supplier. I forget the name of the parts supplier, but someone actually provides a lot of these old components so you can probably find them all. This old earphone was just a single earpiece probably a high impedance earphone on the order of 600 ohms like the old military style headsets used to use but it you actually had to hold it up against your ear it was like a little speaker. Anyway this regeneration regenerative comes from the fact that it would cause positive feedback and you would insert this coil into the larger coil until you got just enough feedback so that the thing would start to oscillate. And it would oscillate at a frequency pretty much determined by what you were tuned to. So it produced in effect kind of a direct conversion receiver as you tune this thing. The uh, frequency of this regenerative oscillation would pass up and down the shortwave band and you could thereby detect and hear Morse code and radio teletype and single sideband and all kind of signals besides that and it also greatly increased the sensitivity and I might say this particular kind of receiver had the disadvantage uh, in fact the hazard that it the, these oscillations if they were strong enough 
could get radiated out of the antenna right up here the antenna they could make their way out there and actually produce an illegal broadcast of a carrier wave so you had to be careful they didn't mention anything about that in the kit I guess it they either didn't realize that it could do that or else they uh, discovered that it wasn't enough of a signal to result in an illegal transmission anyway you had to adjust this by literally pushing this coil in and out of here uh, this is what grid leak means that's the way that they would obtain detection of the that is to say demodulation of the signal with this capacitor and resistor I don't recall the exact values of any of these uh, components but this was probably on the order of a megohm or two and this uh, capacitor probably about 100 picofarads this capacitor up here probably oh I'd say 0.001 microfarads or a thousand picofarads I don't really recall this probably about 0.1 microfarads or 0.01 it's a bypass uh, capacitor this resistor probably in the order of several tens of kilo ohms like maybe 47 kilo ohms something on that order this was an air core transformer which matched the impedance more or less of this antenna to the input impedance of the grid circuit of the vacuum tube so this was called a regenerative grid leak detector this is what the circuit was actually called in the kit I actually remember the very words regenerative grid leak detector with pentode amplifier and I thought wow that is the coolest doggone thing and I heard lots of stuff I heard the old CHU Canada they used to call it CHU Observatory Canada and there was a time and frequency station um, and I later discovered and later when I got more into shortwave listening that it was at 7.335 megahertz just above the 40 meter amateur radio band and I, then I, I also for the first time heard actual radio hams transmitting and receiving their Morse code and their voice and things like that and I became so fascinated this was back in the early 1960s that I resolved to get my amateur radio license and in March of 1966 I finally did exactly that and my call sign was WN0 OKV WN0 OKV I got that in March of 1966 a year later in March of 1967 I got my general class license the license classes were a lot more rigorous and formal back then and the privileges more restrictive but the general class back then gave you all amateur privileges until they came up with incentive licensing uh, which motivated me finally to get my extra class license but that's just a little reminiscing from an old fuddy-duddy here out in the Black Hills of Dakota Territory United States of America the date today is September 30th 2013 that I'm making this video the evening of September 20 or 30th 2013 and later this week in October uh, early October we are expecting our first significant snow event of course we are at 5,000 feet altitude and I live in a ski resort town so snow comes with the territory but I just remember this old radio kit and I give my dad credit bought me this kit and it got me interested in all of the stuff that I've done ever since in radio ham radio writing about electronics the whole business you can go back and blame it on my dad in the early 1960s who bought me this kit you could build a bunch of other circuits with this kit too but this was the one that sticks in my memory really cool stuff you can still build that kind of thing if you want to and it'll probably still work Stan Gibalisco, 
Today, amateur radio call sign is W1GV. You'll find me on 14 megahertz, 18, 21, and 24 megahertz, working mainly CW, that is to say Morse code. Have a good one. And if, uh, if you're getting a hurricane wherever you are, come on up here and you can get some snow instead. Stangibilis goes signing off. Until the next episode, so long.